So good evening, everyone. This is the virtual public info meeting for project number 42329, rehabilitation of bridge numbers 05685 and 05686, 05680, carrying I-384 over I-84 in East Hartford. I'm Susan Mandola of the Connecticut VOT. Before we begin our presentation, I'd like to take some time to go over Title VI and a few Zoom features that you might, might find useful. So, no person shall, on the basis of race, color, or national origin, be excluded from participation or subject to discrimination in the development of this project. Here we have a link for voluntary post meeting survey, uh, as well as a QR code if you have your phone handy. Civil rights information could be found, found at the following link which brings you to the Title VI page. And the recording of this presentation will be posted to YouTube after the event. Closed captioning, including non-English translation options, are available on Zoom and on YouTube. I'm going to take a moment here for any Spanish-speaking attendees to read this slide. This offers information regarding your rights against discrimination as well and how to file a complaint if you believe you have been subject to discrimination under Title VI. In order to view captions or subtitles in Zoom, you can follow the steps as shown. You can click on Show Captions CC at the bottom of the screen. You can click the speaking language as shown and select the language you would like from the list that will be shown. Closed captioning, including non-English translation options, are available on YouTube after the event. How do you use Zoom Q&A? So select the Q&A tool at the bottom of the window of the Zoom webinar window. The Q&A window will open as seen on the right. Please type questions in the text box and click enter. If you're an audio only participant, dial star nine to raise and lower your hand. Regarding the question and answer session, you can submit questions in a number of ways. During this meeting, you can submit them by the Zoom Q&A as previously described. At any time, you can also submit questions by email at dotproject0042-0329 at ct.gov, by phone at 860-594-2020, where you can leave a voicemail, or through the project webpage. Links to the emails into the project webpage will be placed in the Q&A for your convenience. I'd like to note that the comment period for this project will be open through November 28, 2023. I'd like to take some time to introduce the various members of our project team. On behalf of the Connecticut DOT Major Structures Unit, we have Bao Chong as the Principal Engineer, Mez Meziani as the Supervising Engineer, and I am Susan Mandola, the project engineer. Our consultant designer is CHA Consulting Incorporated, and Ryan Cooley is the project manager, Jim Pixley is the structures lead, and Jeff LeMay is the highway lead. Ian Engineers is ex acting as the subconsultant designer, with Sam Martha as the traffic lead. I'll now turn over the presentation to Jen. Great, thank you, Susan. Um, as Susan noted, I'm Jen Pixley from CHA the designer for this project. So we're gonna be discussing state project number 42329, bridge numbers 5685 and 5686, also known as Littlefoot and Bigfoot bridges. So the purpose of this project is to maintain the bridges in a state of good repair. The project needs include extend the service life, prevent moisture intrusion, replace wheat pipe, um, which is draining into the box girder, address the misaligned approach barriers, replace deck joints, patch substructure, and provide a structurally sound deck. <clears throat> For project location. 
Littlefoot carries HOV lanes for I-384 eastbound and westbound over I-84 eastbound, while Bigfoot carries I-384 westbound over I-84 eastbound and westbound. Both bridges run over the East Coast Greenway, which is adjacent to abutment number two. And these bridges are located in East Hartford. The bridges were built in 1986 and in 1998, repairs were made to the pier caps on both bridges. Work included a post tensioning system added to the integral pier cap and a carbon fiber wrap was added to the concrete columns. In 2012, deck joints were replaced at Bigfoot and in 2016, deck joints were replaced at Littlefoot. So I've included a color plan view of Littlefoot and Bigfoot bridges, Bigfoot on top and Littlefoot on bottom. Both bridges are a three span structure comprised of post tension box girders with a monolithic deck shown in orange. The superstructure is continuous over the piers with a post tensioned integral pier cap shown in blue. So this view shows the cross section of the bridges. Again, big foot on top, little foot on bottom. The barriers are shown in red. The existing 32 inch fascia parapets have a 12 inch aluminum bridge rail. The medium barrier on little foot is 32 inch high which separates opposing traffic. The superstructure is shown in light blue and dark blue. The superstructure is comprised of post-tensioned concrete multi-cell box girders with a monolithic deck. The monolithic deck is shown in, as light blue and the remaining superstructure is dark blue. As noted previously, in 1998, repairs were made to the pier caps on both bridges. The top image is a cross section at the pier which shows the added post tensioning in red. The bottom image shows the same post tensioning, which was added on both sides of the piers, also shown in red. So before getting into the existing conditions, I thought it would be useful to know how the condition ratings are determined and the purpose of them. Per the CTDOT Bridge Inspection Manual, a condition rating is a judgment of a bridge component condition in comparison to its original as-built condition used to provide an overall characterization of the general condition of the component being rated. So condition ratings are assigned a numerical value, each indicating a different condition. So nine is excellent, eight very good, seven good, six satisfactory, five fair, um, four poor, three serious, two critical, and one imminent failure. <clears throat> so existing conditions for the deck. Overall, the deck is noted to be in satisfactory condition. The true condition of the deck is unknown due to the bituminous concrete wearing surface on top. The existing deck joints are in satisfactory condition. Deck joints include preformed joint seal at little foot and strip seal joints at big foot. Both joint types exhibit leakage. Overall, the approaches are in satisfactory condition. The approach slabs are not visible. Approach pavement is in satisfactory condition at little foot and good condition at Bigfoot. Guide rail is present at three corners of the bridge. One location consists of a three cable guide rail and the remaining approach guide rail and bridge attachments appear to meet RI or RB350 standards. All approach guide rail and attachments do not meet MASH criteria. There are also concrete barriers at the remaining five corners of the bridges. Three of the five approach barriers are misaligned these barriers are 32 inch tall barrier wall or parapet on retaining wall and does not meet the latest con dot or mass criteria. Overall, the superstructure is in fair condition at Littlefoot and satisfactory condition at Bigfoot. The bearings are in satisfactory condition. The bearings consist of expansion pot bearings at each abutment while the piers are integral with the superstructure and do not have bearings. The existing bearing exhibits slight lateral misalignment, bearings in overcontraction mode, PTFE strips squeezed out at one location, and loose deformed or missing PTFE keeper strips. The girders are in fair condition at Littlefoot and in satisfactory condition at Bigfoot. The superstructure consists of post tension concrete box girders. Each structure consists of five cells. The girders exhibit cracking throughout previously. Epoxy injected cracks are propagating. Cracks in the top and bottom flanges exhibit transverse and longitudinal cracks and cracking in the webs exhibit vertical and diagonal cracks. 
there are some isolated locations of hollow areas and spalls with exposed rebar. Overall, the substructure is in satisfactory condition at both bridges. The substructure consists of reinforced concrete abutments and piers integral with the superstructure. The concrete abutments exhibit hairline cracks, light scale and honeycombing, map cracks, hollow areas, and spalls. Pier columns are encased in carbon fiber wrap and exhibit minor scraping in areas of peeling coat. The integral post-tension pier caps exhibit horizontal and vertical cracks, some with efflorescence. Some cracks have been previously epoxy injected and some cracks are propagating. <clears throat> So major scope of work items include deck joint, wearing surface, and waterproofing membrane replacement, coat concrete with penetrating sealer, wheat pipe repairs, bearing replacement, concrete repair, crack repair and crack monitoring, realign approach barriers, upgrade and block transitions, replace approach guide rails, and some minor full depth shoulder reconstruction and approach mill and overlay. <clears throat> Next, I will discuss some additional information on existing conditions and propose repairs on a few scope items. For the bridge joints, as noted previously, are in satisfactory condition and are leaking at both bridges. In order to repair the leaking joints, they will need to be replaced with strip seal expansion joints, which does require deck end reconstruction. Next, the approach barriers um, are noted to be misaligned up to five inches vertically and four inches laterally, as you can see in this photo. In order to fix these realignment um, is required to the northwest and southwest corners of Littlefoot and the northeast corner of Bigfoot, <clears throat> shown in this map in green. Realignment of the barriers requires reconstruction of these approach barriers. For impacts, there will be no utility or rights of way impacts. And for traffic impacts, I will start at Littlefoot. So the rehabilitation work will consist of two stages that utilize a long-term lane shift for the I-384 westbound HOV and full lane closure and detour on I-384 eastbound HOV. As you can see in the images on the right, red indicating the work zone areas for each stage. So for stage one um, consists of I-384 westbound HOV lane shifted to the left, while I-384 eastbound HOV will remain open. Now for stage two. Stage two consists of I-384 westbound HOV lane shifted to the right and I-384 eastbound HOV, ra HOV ramp closed. So I'll discuss the ramp closure in more detail on the next slide. So to further discuss the closure of <clears throat> I-384 eastbound HOV lane, the ramp will be closed intermittently up to two weeks at a time. The reason for this closure is due to the narrow roadway. So the closure will require that the eastbound HOV lane for both I-84 and I-384 be closed. Multiple detours are required to accommodate the closure. So you can see here image one, um, the detour is for the traffic entering I-84 eastbound HOV on-ramp from Silver Lane where vehicles will be detoured to I-84 mainline entrance ramp. Image two here shows I-84 eastbound HOV exit ramp closed where vehicles will be directed to stay in I-84 mainline. Image three shows I-84 eastbound HOV lane closed <clears throat> where again, the vehicles will be directed to stay on I-84 mainline. Now for Big Bigfoot, uh, the rehabilitation work will consist of three stages that utilize traffic drums and truck mounted impact attenuators for temporary off peak lane closures that will facilitate the reopening of lanes during peak traffic volume hours. So you can see the images to the right, red again indicating the work zone areas for each stage. So stage one, stage one, uh, temporary off peak right lane closed on I 84 westbound and lane shifts on the entrance ramp from Cemetery Road. Stage two, traffic is shifted to the left with left lane closed on I-384 westbound. Stage three, traffic is shifted to the fascias and the center lane is closed 
to create a center work zone and temporary off peak shift to the entrance ramp from Cemetery Road. In addition to the traffic drums during stage one and stage three, temporary traffic barrier will be used for positive protection during off peak hours for the end block and approach barrier and guide rail work. So for other, ro other roadway impacts on I-84 eastbound and westbound, there may be temporary off peak lane and shoulder closures and the East Coast Greenway pedestrian and bicycle path is anticipated to remain available to pedestrians and bicyclists throughout construction. So this is our last slide here um, on schedule and construction cost. So for schedule, um, final design plans are anticipated in June of 2025, advertising for construction of fall of 2025, start of construction is anticipated of spring of 2026, and construction completion of fall of 2026. Our total estimated construction cost is currently 10.46 million with 90% federal funds and 10% state funds. So this does conclude um, our presentation and we will be opening up for questions. While we wait for questions, I'd like to note again <clears throat> that questions can be sent in by email, phone or chat. So by email at dotproject0042 0329 at ct.gov by phone at 860-594-2020 and also by using the Zoom Q&A feature. So again, I thank you for joining today and look forward to answering any of your questions. So Jen, I think there is a uh, one question. Okay, so Jen, the pavement on these bridges appears to be in pretty good condition. Why are you proposing to replace it? Okay, yep, that's a great question. So I agree the pavement is in um, pretty good condition. Um, it was noted to be in good condition at Littlefoot and very good condition at Bigfoot. Um, so it's based on the the condition ratings as noted previously. So the main reason we're proposing to replace the pavement is actually not due to the condition of the pavement, but to preserve and protect the existing deck. So by stripping off the pavement and the waterproofing membrane, it gives access to the deck to repair the concrete and replace the existing um, waterproofing membrane, which is approximately 37 years old. So again, the purpose is to repair um, and add protection to the deck, um, not typically to repair the um, pavement. Thank you, Ken. As Jen men mentioned before, um, not only can you ask questions in the chat here and now in the Q&A, the Zoom Q&A, but at any time up to November 28th, um, questions can be submitted by the email, by the phone, shown, or on the project mm -hmm. webpage. Then, are any wetlands going to be impacted by your proposed work? Okay, so for wetlands, um, wetlands were delineated for this project um, by a certified soil scientist. And they did find a small area of wetlands, which was just outside our project limits um, impacts. So as it was beyond our project limits, impacts to this area are not anticipated. Thank you. So Douglas Wilson asks, what is the ADT for the commuter lane traffic that will be detoured to Silver Lane? So the HOV lane traffic, do we have the ADT for that? Yep, I'm hoping Sam Martha from VN um, has that information available.
Yeah, um, I will look at that and get back in a minute. That's all right. Yeah, great. Thank you, Doug. We'll do our best to get that information to you and we'll keep the question open for now and um, hopefully be able to get you an answer sooner rather than later. I'd also like to reiterate that in the Q&A, we posted some links at the top of the list, we have the um, link to the Title VI page on the Connecticut DOT website. That'll give you any information on um, so your civil rights regarding protection from discrimination, ways to make complaints, and other useful information in that regard. There's a link to a survey, so you can tell us how we did. The email address is provided as well. So you can ask any questions and the link to the project website. So are there any utilities impacted during the course of this project? Our utilities. Um, so luckily there is no utilities on this bridge other than the um, electrical for the bridge luminaires. So there will be no utilities anticipated um, to be impacted. Mm -hmm. And Roger Clayman asks, what will you do to the inside of the structure? Uh, so by inside, I'm assuming um, he means inside of the concrete box girders. Um, so the, overall, the structure inside is mainly cracking. I do not believe there was any spalls. There potentially could be hollow areas. Um, so during construction, they'll go through and hammer tap and see if there's any hollow areas. Um, so if there are, they will patch those as well with any spalls that are found. And so for the cracks, we are going to repair the cracks um, and potentially seal them. And then we will be monitoring the cracks as well. Okay. I'd like to also know, I, I, you've noted at some point in the presentation as well, but there's at least one section of the box covered that needs a, a weak pipe. Yes, as well. you, Susan, you're right. Yep. And Douglas Wilson says, thanks, don't anticipate a problem, but will be good to know the extra traffic that will be on a relatively narrow section of signal lane. That's regard to the question about the ADT. So will the project require funds from the town of East Hartford? Um, no, the project is completely funded by federal funds and state funds. Um, so of that 90% will be coming from federal funds and 10% from state funds. Susan, I think there's another question. Okay. What is a weak pipe and why are you repairing them? Ooh. All right, so this kind of goes to what Susan noted before. Um, but weak pipes are PVC outlet pipes um, from the deck weep holes. Um, so I'll touch upon weep holes. Weep holes are holes that that are holes in the deck to drain water. Um, that is between the membrane and that deck overlay. So weep holes are typically located in the shoulder. Um, and they are extended as required to not drain on the uh, superstructure members or any other bridge components. So on these bridges, there are several PVC wheat pipes that are short. Um, some are clogged and some are broken. And there is one, as Susan just noted, again, 
um, draining into the box cell. So all these wheat pipes will either require replacement, um, cleaning, or repair. I have an answer for the ADT question. Um, it looks like that it's about 150 uh, that will be detoured from that Silver Lane entrance to the other one, so 150. Thank you, Sue. I've also noted that in the uh, answer section. So there's a text answer as well. Now, and if at any time you want to look up any more information on the project, you can visit the project web page at uh, portal.cp.gov slash DOT East Hartford 42-329. The link is in the Q&A. And the Q&A session in general, questions can be submitted up until November 28th of this year. And that can be done by email, by phone, or on the project web page. Any other questions from the town? Well set. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. We appreciate you attending and asking questions. Um, again. Please take the time if you need to to submit any other further questions up until November 28th. And we will answer them as they come in. In the meantime, thank you very much for attending. Please, uh, you um, uh, if you can, take the time to complete the so, uh, survey. As previously stated, we put a link in the chat. The for your convenience. I got it. That's it. Thank you all. All right. Thank you very much, everyone.